What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our RP1 playthrough on Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. This is episode 8, and I am your host, Calvin McClure. Last episode, we had several very successful flights of our Silver Brandt BB flying the combination of biological sample and film return capsules. So we had several successful flights with that, which was really good. We also had a fairly eventful flight of our XSP-3D and it ended up in a rather spectacular mid-flight breakup. But with the year 1957 fast approaching, we shift our focus to bigger things as we accept our first orbital contract. The unlocking of that recent materials tech node now gives us the tank type that I was targeting to use for our uh, Silverbrand or RB, which is the integral tank type. So with that, we go back to the VAB and we continue last episode's work and we continue the development of what will be this career's first orbital rated booster. Those of you with a keen eye will notice that the positioning of the avionics unit is perhaps a little bit unusual. But this in fact is, in my opinion, sort of what the, the genius behind this design and the ace of its sleeve of this rocket is. I can't quite yet go into the details as to what it is I'm hinting about, although you might be able to kind of piece the story together with what you're seeing. But uh, when we go ahead and fly this rocket for the first time, the pieces will all fit together and you'll understand what I'm talking about. on the launch pad there was still some work to be done we still had a biological return capsule and film capsule to send up to complete a contract we had accepted last episode Financially speaking, this was still a worthwhile contract and we're still waiting for uh, some other key items to complete development and research before we can attempt our first orbital launch. So there was nothing in queue for the VAB other than this rocket. So there was really no good reason not to, but there was a good reason to go ahead with the launch. Thank you. 
And so with that, Landing completes the fourth successful biological film return mission. And finally, we come to the last major tech note that I wanted to complete this design, which was the avionics prototype. What that next generation of uh, avionics gives us is somewhere around 15 to 20 percent reduction in mass. I wasn't so much concerned or looking at the reduction in power consumption. That wasn't too much my concern. But the improvement in mass ratio makes quite a difference, especially when you're going from 400 to 300 kilogram mass unit. So now that we've got that last piece of the puzzle, we can complete the design of the Silver Red Orbital Rated Booster. Another one of the outstanding contracts we had to do was launching something up to 2,000 kilometers. And when we went for it on our first attempt, that happened. So we rolled it back, swamped the engines, and went out for attempt number two. Attempt number two seems like it was faring for a much better end, but shortly into the flight, we lost engine performance on our first stage. I tried to do something to salvage the mission and uh, maybe get some science out of it, but uh, as you can see, we're not able to really make much of anything out of this mission whatsoever. Space plane contracts continue to be a worthwhile endeavor, especially if you factor in the quick turnaround time that's available if you don't have to rebuild the plane in between every flight. But at 40,000 funds per flight available, uh, this was definitely worthwhile and justifiably so to go for. Even with our current cockpit still being rated for only 75 kilometers, going above that is nevertheless familiar terror to us at this point. We know what we're capable of and we know how to tempt fate without being completely reckless.
With the aircraft recovered, no sooner is it refueled, reattached, and reflown. And this time we go for a fairly manageable supersonic flight hold for three minutes. As soon as the contract is completed, we gun the engines, get extra speed and extra height just to make sure that we've got the glide capacity to make it all the way back home in the shortest amount of time. So with that landing completes the fourth overall flight in this career of the XSP-3D. Two very simple flights, very much within the capacity of the aircraft, but very much worth it financially to complete, especially with such a short turnaround time. With the construction well underway of what will hopefully become our first artificial satellite in this career, we go in and we add the mass spectrometry payload in order to maximize our scientific returns on that mission. While not what we need to complete the first scientific artificial satellite contract, it is nevertheless a easy and worthwhile addition to the mission. That completes this episode, a bit of a shorter one, but really a preparation for what's to come. Episode nine is where things get really very interesting on more than one front, in fact. So I hope you'll be there to watch it all unfold. Thanks for watching again. If you like what you see, please do like and subscribe. It always does help and it's very encouraging to see that. Until next time, catch you on the next flight.